So it's two days in a row that for whatever reason, Facebook has decided to make me hunt down my own live video uh, when I go through Zoom, but that's okay. We're still a few minutes early. Hey, Heather, uh, will you uh, put a comment if you can in the chat, if you can hear and see me just fine? Um, I'm assuming you got a notification because you are in here just like that. Um, I'm wondering what I have done differently the last two days that made it not go live the way it did the first couple days. Um, something super funny today, Heather. Uh, one of my mutual friends on Facebook uh, that I met through online marketing also has the name Heather Farrell, or however you pronounce your last name. Um, uh, I thought you changed your profile picture because I clicked on it. It was like, oh, what's Heather up to? And then realized, uh, wait a second, this is not the Heather Farrell that I know. So yeah, that was uh, a little awkward. I'm glad I didn't start a conversation like, hey, Heather, what's up? How's Japan? Um, yeah. So anyways, that's my little story for the day. Um, somehow that happens. You know what's really ironic? I live in a town that's only like 100,000 people. And uh, like S Anderson's a super common last name, but Seth is not a common first name, at least not much. And uh, in my little town of only 100,000, there is another Seth Anderson. And not only is there another Seth Anderson, we are the same age and he lives like a half a mile away from me, which is super random. So yeah, that's uh, my little small world story for today. Hey Bear, thanks for being here. Um, do you guys have bef any questions before we... Uh, get started in a few minutes um, about anything specific that we've talked about or something that you're wondering if we're gonna cover it. Um, yeah, I, I am getting a lot of good feedback, but I don't necessarily always know whether um, I'm missing, you know, certain questions or, you know, somebody is not quite connecting, you know, like who their who could be or what their offer could be, especially if they're in something that already has an offer or what. Um, yeah, let me know if um, you have any of those questions. Otherwise, we will get started in just a moment. So I'm uh, waiting for Bettina to show up. She's always here for like the first 10 seconds uh, because I think it's like 11 or midnight or something in Austria where she's at. She always like pops in and says hi and then goes to bed and watches the replay later. But uh, maybe not today. Maybe she crashed out early. So yeah, Heather, you might have a, uh, a, a twin in name only. You didn't look similar, but I thought uh, maybe your profile picture was of somebody else. So yeah, uh, traffic, traffic is an interesting subject because, yeah, I, I don't want to get into it too much yet, Heather, but let's, uh, we'll, we'll get into it a lot today. Um, I want people to open up their minds to the idea of traffic and what is available to them and what they should focus on. And you know what? We're at three o'clock, so I'm gonna I'm gonna start with that thought, and I don't wanna I don't wanna miss it. If I if I reuse this content, I want to have like a clean break where I start the day and welcome everybody. So I'm gonna start with that thought. I'll get to it after we take like a 10 second pause, and uh, and get to it. Hey Andrew, glad to have you here. Um, I'm actually feel like I'm doing pretty good of actually watching the chat while I'm talking. 
but that might change as soon as we get into it. Anyways, we're going to take a little 10 second break and then we'll get started. Hello and welcome to day four of the five days to 5k challenge. This is probably the day that most people wanted to start with, and that is traffic. It's always a matter of traffic, isn't it? Well, let's talk about whether that's the truth or not, why programs on traffic sell so much, why it seems to be such a difficult thing for most people, why some people always seem to get it right and others don't, all right? Let's get into it, okay? So let's first talk about the path we've already been down. Monday, we start with mindset. Mindset leads to our tribe or our who, because a lot of times when we go back to see what shaped our mindset, it helps us to identify our who. The better we've identified our who, it is easier to see what product or what offer, what pain point they have so that we can offer them a solution. Then we hit today and we hit traffic. How to bring traffic to your offer. How to bring traffic to your solution. How to bring traffic to your lead magnet. Now, the reality though is a lot of courses out there start with traffic and people always ask that question, well, how do I get traffic? We're gonna talk about how once we've solved the first three that we've already done in the last few days, traffic becomes an easier byproduct of selling it. And let's talk about why other people get this backwards and why it's important that you don't, okay? The reality is everybody thinks traffic is the solution. But the reality is traffic should be the easiest part. The easiest part of the whole equation, okay? The reason it can be, oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Melanie. I hope things are okay. Uh, we'll catch you later. Um, sorry for digressing like that, but traffic really should be easy. And this is why, okay? When people say they wanna learn how to get traffic, what they're really saying is, I want to learn how to get traffic for free and lots of it, or I want to learn how to do paid traffic and get it super cheap because I don't know how to make any money on the back end with that traffic. So I've got to get it free or cheap because otherwise I'm spending too much money on traffic that it doesn't make it worth it. So let's solve all of that today. And the way we do that is by what we have already established. There's a saying that the person that can afford to spend the most on their, you know, acquisition of a customer wins. And that's because what follows them after they get that initial, you know, visitor, client, lead, whatever you want to call it, is a funnel or system of sales and product and so on that it pays for itself a hundred times over. Now that doesn't mean they are just blowing money. It means if a person has a product and they only know how to get $10 out of someone, well then if they're spending more than $10 to get a new lead, that's where the break even point is. But if over the lifetime of a new lead, you can get them to spend 50, 100, 1,000, 5,000, 10,000, 
your ability to acquire new customers by just simply paying for it goes up. Now, don't get nervous. This isn't about how you need to pour yourself into paid traffic. But we want this concept down that traffic should be the easy part because if you have the ability to get people to pay you for things that are helpful to them, then you have more of ability to just pay to get them into your funnel. You might not be great at paid ads, but let's say you become the world's expert at paid, at paid ads and you can get leads, you know, let's say for a dollar. That's just a number. I'm not saying that's good or bad but you can only sell them a $10 product because you don't know what you're doing after that. But let's say you're really bad at it and it costs you, you know, 20, 30, 50, a hundred dollars to get somebody, but you know how to get a thousand, five thousand, ten thousand dollars in revenue from them. It doesn't matter if you weren't the best at paid ads. And the reality is if you're really truly that bad at it, you can pay somebody else who is good at it to do it for you. So that's why traffic should be the easiest because once we've established our own mindset, who that who is and what their pain points are and how we solve those with our offers and then tomorrow about how we follow up with them and continue to get revenue from them because we provide value to them that is worth it to them, then the traffic part becomes negligible. But that doesn't mean disconnect and you know not follow along today because we're gonna talk about some real world things because the reality is most people start not having a budget to start with traffic, not wanting to throw money down the drain, so to speak, to figure out how to do it paid so we're going to look at that, but we're also going to look at the paid side too, because so often when people think of paid ads, all they think of is Facebook. And yes, Facebook is amazing, but it's not your only option. So let's get to a couple of things that we can think about first before we decide what type of traffic to go after. So when you focus on traffic first, you're focusing on the method, you know, whether that's buying a course on, you know, YouTube or Facebook or, you know, Pinterest or Instagram or anything, people start, especially when they're new about how do I get the most traffic? But you know what the problem is with the most traffic? That used to work back in like 2009 because this whole concept of affiliate marketing and value and content wasn't really established yet. It was in the real world, but not online. Now people expect value, content. Uh, they don't just generally, for the most part, randomly buy from someone they've never heard of unless the offer is so good that they're willing to pull the trigger. And even then, most people, it takes seven to 10 touches, even on a really good offer for them to pull the trigger. So when you focus first on the traffic method, you're missing the whole component of who's your who and what product to offer them and what's the best circumstance to offer them to. So this is where, and I want, I want to pinpoint this very clearly for you. If you see an ad on Facebook that says, I can show you how to make money with ads on Facebook, it's very congruent. But when somebody is on an Instagram ad saying, I'm going to show you how to create a following through paid ad on paid ads on LinkedIn. Well, then why are they paying for ads on Instagram if they're going to teach a method on 
how paid ads work inside LinkedIn. Shouldn't they be doing paid ads inside LinkedIn, LinkedIn so that there isn't this disconnect? Now, I'm not saying it never works because there are retargeting and things that we'll talk about tomorrow in our, our follow-up series, but we want to be our message, our mode, our who, our offer to be congruent. That doesn't mean that like a video course can't be sold on Instagram or Facebook or so on. But when you're starting out, we're not going to try and master everything. We're going to figure out where you're, who are, what you're good at, and how to put that in front of them. So let's first talk about that. Where are your who? And everybody in this group will have a different answer. Even if the answer is the same platform, your answer is different because your business is different and your who is different. So let's just take a look really quickly at some of the demographics, okay? Um, if your demographic is 18 year olds, then the majority of them are not on Facebook. They are on apps like TikTok and Snapchat and things like that. If your crowd is older, you know, probably 35 plus, then Facebook is definitely where they're going to be. If your who is professional business people, let's say your uh, offer, your who are those that need, you know, time management uh, skills or management uh, of people skills, then your who is hanging out probably on places like LinkedIn. So thinking about where your who is first is important because you could potentially get free traffic just by being on the platform that they are already on. If your target is primarily women and especially married women with children, you should be on Pinterest. Now, you might be thinking, well, how does my product apply to Pinterest or something like that? Because people only pin recipes and clothes and stuff. Let's get into that later because wherever you go, there is a market. But who, where is your who now, okay? Now we're already talking about online, okay? And you want an online business, but if you're starting out, maybe, maybe they are somewhere offline, okay? In my small town, there is a business group that only allows, because they're kind of a cooperative, that only allows one business in of each type. So it is a paid for group, but if you are a real estate agent, you only get to be the only one in that group. If you're a window cleaning company, you're the only window cleaning company that gets to be a part of that group because then everybody works together in promoting each other's group. So for me, being in there as the only online marketer that shows how to build brands online and take businesses online, I have a niche that no one else can reach. Where are they meeting in real life? And is that a viable traffic source for you? Now, this depends on your location. This depends on your who. This depends on your time. But start expanding this idea of traffic, where it could come from you. Yes, we all want to be able to get our businesses to the point where we are paying for an ad that we put so much, you know, a certain dollar amount in and we get somebody out that spends more money than that because then we can pump as many people through that funnel as possible because if you put a dollar in and get $2 out, you just need to keep putting dollars in. But most of us probably aren't there yet. So let's expand our idea of where traffic could be. Do you have meetups like that in your town? Do you have something like a chamber of commerce that has business 
like this where you can meet once a month. A lot of them, maybe you could get in for free. If you have a particular skill, can you go and present that to a group of business owners at some other type of function? Look around. You might be surprised how much traffic is available right now and it doesn't cost you a dime. So now second, let's talk about what you're comfortable with. Okay. Because all of us are different. Some of us uh, are good at one-on-one -on -one conversations with, you know, maybe somebody on the phone. Uh, maybe we're really good on, you know, live video. Maybe we're good on recorded video. Maybe we are better at having a text conversation because we can articulate exactly what we want to say. Maybe we're really good at Photoshop and we know how to create beautiful graphics that people could see. What makes you comfortable? Because I'll tell you, one of the biggest things that you can do that makes this difficult is trying to go down and follow a traffic source that makes you uncomfortable. If you are terrified of being on live video, then don't start a YouTube channel unless you're really good at creating slideshows or presentations or videos that don't have to have your face. So think about what are you already comfortable with? Third, where are you already at? What are you already using? So are you familiar with Facebook? Are you familiar with YouTube? Are you familiar with Pinterest? Because if you're already comfortable with the platform, then most likely you're going to be more willing to spend time on it doing what you were already doing. I mean, that's the thing is, me personally, I'm going to cover a couple of areas where you can get traffic that I do not use. Wow, big full disclaimer. I'm going to teach something I don't know. No, I'm not. I'm going to point you in a direction of something that I know others use and have success with, and you might already know more than me about it, but maybe you haven't thought about it yet. So what are you already comfortable with? What are you already spending time on? I have a friend that him and his wife and their two little girls um, all play instruments. Um, and like, they're kind of like the ukulele family. My friend has had a band. He does all these types of things. And as a family, they make these uh, TikTok videos and stuff and Instagram that totally goes viral. I mean, like they literally started out and with like a hundred followers in their first week, which isn't much, they had a, uh, a video go like to like, I don't know, like 5,000 views or something like that because it was public because they're comfortable with it already. So think about what are you already using? Where are you already at? And what, how can you connect that with your who? because the next thing we wanna see is what to do to put their offer in front of them, okay? So now, once you started thinking about this, the next concept is really the relationship, and you can only answer this for yourself, about either time or money, because traffic costs one of the two. I, I hate to break it to you, but those softwares that they're out there selling for, you know, 17 bucks that says you press one click and you're going to get a flood of traffic, they don't exist. They do not work. Now, there are softwares that help processes. And I'll talk about like one that I use because it eliminates some of the grunt work. But if you don't have a system in place, if you don't have a platform you use, there is no such thing as pressing one button and getting a flood of traffic for nothing, okay? It takes time to build up assets, and that's what we're going to do, and why that's more important to get that going and building assets that will work for you long term than, you know, just a specific traffic strategy, okay? So I'm going to share my screen.
and I'm just going to briefly touch on these. Okay. Just some of the, what we call organic. So free is basically what we mean. Uh, traffic strategies versus paid strategies. Now these are just a couple. They're not all inclusive. Okay. So on your uh, organic side, um, social media. So Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok, um, you know, even LinkedIn is sort of a social media platform. It's just more for business owners. Um, they can interact for free on some level. Now, yes, there are Facebook paid ads that happen on social media, but for the most part, the social media platform um, has free traffic. Um, now, it gives you another one of live streams on social media. That's just another use of the free social media platform. It's just a different method. Um, if you are good at going, if you're comfortable on camera, a live stream could be very effective because most people get notifications more of you going live than of just something you post. Um, and that's just the way Facebook is set up. And right now they're really pushing live. So the more you go live, if you're comfortable, the more people that are going to see what you're offering. Now, the next one says special guest shout outs. Now this can happen you know, whether it's on Facebook or on Instagram um, or anything like that, where basically someone else is singing your praises on the, in front of their following, okay? Now, if you're brand new, let's say you've only got, you know, a couple hundred followers, then most likely you're not going to get somebody that has a million followers to shout you out. But... There's no reason you can't find other people that have a related niche. Now, maybe you don't want to trade a shout out for shout out on somebody that does it specifically exactly what you do because, you know, you're trading your followers for them. But, you know, if you have a good, if you have a good funnel, if you have a good offer, it's not going to matter that you share your traffic because people will buy from multiple people. So, Maybe you've got, you know, let's say you've got uh, 500 followers or 300 followers on your Instagram about your, you know, what your message is. Let's say you're in the health or whatever. It doesn't matter. Go find somebody else that has a similar, you know, fan base and has a similar account and say, hey, I'd like to feature you on mine if you'd feature me on yours. And you basically get to grow each other's fan base by saying, hey, this is so-and-so, check out what they're doing, it's really cool, and give them a follow, and they do the same for you, and you're growing like that for free. This can be very effective the more and more you grow because your accounts can grow exponentially at this point. Affiliates, now what that is, is specifically people that are promoting your product for you. Now remember, that means you have to have your own product because you're not finding affiliates to be your affiliate for another affiliate product. There are very few of those out there and they do exist, but that's a touchy, touchy road to go on, especially when you are just starting because you need to be able to offer them something. So instead, you create a product, you create value, and you find people that are in the same niche and say, hey, if you promote my product, I'll give you 50% is generally the going rate, okay? They, you get a traffic source that you never would have been able to get in front of yourself and they get a commission, um, you know, for giving you sales that you wouldn't have gotten on your own. Not a bad gig, especially start, starting out. But again, you have to have your own product. And if you're just starting out, sometimes we tend to shy away to only doing affiliate marketing and not preparing ourselves to create a product of our own. And really in the long run, affiliate marketing is, it's absolutely great to start with. And it's something that you should continue to do, but you want to start to create your own products. We'll talk about that uh, probably a little bit more. Um, if you guys didn't notice today, I did announce that um, because of the response of you guys, 
Um, I'm going to do this again next week. Um, it's going to have a slightly different focus. So if you want to join again, um, I'm more than happy to have you. But we're going to talk a little bit more um, about in depth with a few different things, kind of angle the challenge a little bit different. So I think you'll, you know, one, you're going to get some great reminders, but you're also going to get a few uh, things that we just didn't have time to touch on uh, this week. All right. Now, um, not listed in the organic side is things like you can build your own website. Okay. That features you and what you do in your story. Um, you know, people do blogs. Um, you can create a, a YouTube channel that is, you know, reviewing products. That's really popular right now. Reviewing other affiliate products or talking about a specific, whatever your specific niche is and sharing helpful tips and tricks and so on. But again, you know, if you're comfortable with that strategy. Um, but the thing is with those, because you don't already have a platform where people are at um, in terms of like Facebook and Instagram where you can directly connect with them, uh, both your own blogs and YouTube need SEO or search engine optimization keywords. And that is a little bit harder of a game to get started. Um, it is a long-term play to establish authority, but it's probably not gonna ramp you up a lot of traffic unless you are doing a lot of, like a lot of YouTube videos, you know, and very specific keywords, like a product is gonna come out today, you know, an affiliate product, and you're doing a review on it the day before. And so people are searching it in and people, you know, there's very few people that have done a video on it yet. That's just one example. So, Yes, maybe a route you want to go, but maybe not starting, okay? Maybe same thing with your blog. Unless you already have one and you've been talking about a subject because you do it and you love it anyways, then start focusing on the keyword strategies that will start to bring in traffic. And that's just something you have to learn. There are plenty of tools out there that will help you. Even Google has its own keyword tool that shows you volumes and of you know people searching for it and how competitive competitive it is and you know that helps you know whether you can rank for certain keywords and so on stuff like that all right now we're going to pop over before we talk about the paid ad side we're going to pop over to let me stop sharing this and let me share a site that you may or may not be familiar with and I just want, I want to show you an example. I'm not saying that this is the best strategy for you to go to, but I am showing you the idea that there is way more traffic out there than just trying to pay for a Facebook ad, which is what so many people go to right off the bat. Okay. And some of you may have heard of this before. Some of you may not. Uh, this is a website called Quora, okay? Q-U-O-R-A.com. Uh, many of you are probably familiar with like Yahoo Answers um, and things like that where, you know, people can post questions and, you know, answers will come up and so on and so forth. Well, this is a similar site, you know, many ways different, but many ways similar. I'm just on the home page here. Okay. This is a way to get in front of people for free. Okay. So if you look at this side um, on the left, you'll see different things like uh, entrepreneurial mindset, uh, Amazon private label sellers. That's uh, a business that I'm in affiliate marketing uh, writers, Facebook for business, Instagram, sales and personal growth, YouTube marketing. These are all subjects that I follow because one, I have an interest in them, but I also have a business interest in them and in getting in front of these people. So here you'll see somebody, you know, posted a question, what psychological trick changed your life? And then somebody, you know, posted an answer 
it got upvoted and there's just literally millions of these types of questions that are being asked on this site okay so how does that matter well look at this one what marketing tricks do people fall for each day no answer yet you can get notified when people post in your niche and if you find questions that no one has answered and you can be the or you can be the first one to answer it they're gonna see your response you can provide a quality response. Now this question, you know, they might just be trying to bait people a little bit. It's not a genuine question, maybe for somebody truly looking for help, but there are people that are on the site all every day that are saying, I genuinely need help with this subject. And then you can answer them, give them quality information and then one, tell them to look at your profile or link to your website. You know, you can create your own profile. You'll see my little, you know, avatar up here in the corner. And you have a blurb about what you do and the experience you have and how you can help people. And all of that can be directly speaking to your who. You know, you don't want to put in your profile, like, Hey, I'm, you know, so-and-so from somewhere and uh, I like this and I like that. You want it to focus on answering and offering the solution to your who. So if you, you know, know how a traffic strategy specifically, let's say, or you answer a specific health, you know, question, or you deal with a certain real estate market be that person in your profiles. In fact, any of your social media profiles, be that person. So when they look at you, when a person looks at your profile, they know who you're about and what you're not. Because if they really want to connect with you, they will. And that's half the job already is they look at you as maybe being the person that can provide an answer and a solution to them. Okay. So again, this is just one thing. You can use your profile to link to your blog that will have, you know, you could put uh, articles on that that would answer some of these questions and link to that and say, hey, if you want to know more about this answer that I just provided, check out my blog. And then you can have an opt-in form on there where they'll give you their email address you know, to know more about you, to follow you so that you can keep up with them. These are all things that you can do for free, but always remember time versus money. Where are you going to put your time or where are you going to put your money to bring in traffic? Because it's always one or the other or a combination of them both. So here's interesting lesson, okay? This is my 40 ounce Costco water bottle. And if I hold it up to the screen, this is a place called Apex Fitness. Okay. It's a uh, really expensive group coaching gym that um, I don't go to right now. Well, one, because we're in quarantine, but uh, I had to stop going when I got in my car accident last August, but I had been going there uh, for years. Okay. There, <clears throat> it costs $150 a month to go there. A lot of people don't want to pay more than 10, 20, 30 bucks for a gym. And yet I was paying $150 to only spend three hours in there a week in a group session, not even one-on-one -on -one training, group sessions, okay? Because they offered the exact solution that I wanted. I didn't want to go into a gym and have to do my own routine and pick up my weights and put them back and, you know, spend half my time waiting for a machine or walking around trying to figure out what my next move was or figuring out, am I doing enough of these exercises? I wanted to walk in, have the whole thing set out for me, have it timed for me, 
have me told exactly what I'm doing so that I can get in, spend an hour and get out and get a better workout than I ever could on my own. I am their who. I don't want to waste the time, in my opinion, to go use a regular gym in that manner because it takes too much effort and energy and out of me that I would rather be spending in other things. I want to work out. I, I love the feeling. I love being healthy. I appreciate it way more now that I have lost it all and had to get it back. So I'm there who, and look what I'm doing. I am now advertising for them for free. I even have a sticker of theirs on my car. Now I'm not saying you go slap your business sticker on a bunch of things, you know, for your online business, but I get people cause I wear their sweatshirts, ask me around town all the time. What's apex fitness. And I rave about them because I'm their who. So that's possible for you by staying in your lane, you know, sticking to your who and helping them get solutions, whether it's through a site like Cora, through your social media, through paid ads, through your local business. Let's say you run a local only business. Let's say you're a real estate agent. Um, you only have a local who, cause you're not selling in another state. You're not selling all over the world. Well, then your who needs to become more specific because you, it's in a very specific location. But if you can become the who to a certain crowd, they will rave about you. And it is so much easier, especially in like a high ticket thing, like where real estate agents get a big commission. Somebody coming to you wants to know they can trust you and a recommendation from someone else because of the value you brought, because you specifically, let's say you dealt with seniors downsizing in your county only, okay? Maybe that's too specific where, for where you live. But if you did and you you know, focused on that group and you helped them write and did it the right way, everybody's going to want to come to you that's in that situation because their friends are the type, if they are in that situation, they probably have friends that are also in that situation and they will talk about you and build you up and you don't have to sell because you've already created that value. I'm really thirsty today. I always recommend drinking a lot of water but it's a little distracting on here sometimes. Okay, so uh, besides Quora, um, there are forums out there. This used to be a lot more popular, but don't discredit it because there are very niche specific forums that you can get on. And if people are still following a forum, they're very interested in the subject. Uh, they also get indexed in Google. Quora gets indexed in Google. Yahoo Answers gets indexed in Google. So all of a sudden you could have a source of traffic from answering a question <laughs> one time that is at the top of Google and you're getting free traffic like mad because people are searching for something similar. So don't discredit it. You can also usually in those forums, especially after you've been in there for a little bit of time, add a signature that goes to your bio or goes to your website or goes to your you know social media profile or whatever. And every time you comment and share value with somebody, they're going to see what you offer at the below. And if you got a succinct little sentence about how you can help them and what you do, and then lead them to a place where they can follow you free traffic. Okay. The next site I want to show you in this, oh wait, I'm getting too ahead. That's uh, in our paid section. Okay. Um, I'm going to stop sharing this for just a second. So you also, you know, don't want to uh, forget that like, uh, anywhere that you can do um, traffic uh, swaps. I covered this a little bit, but like shout out for shout out on Instagram, you'll see, and you've probably noticed this before, maybe depending on uh, what accounts you follow, that they'll do contests, like a follow for follow type contest where they'll say, hey, uh, we're going to give away this. And the only thing you have to do to enter is like this post or comment or go follow these couple of accounts and groups will do that, you know, as so like, let's say you went out and found two other accounts or three other accounts that had the same niche kind of as you and three of uh, 
and about the same amount of followers and said, hey, every one of us, let's run this contest. Tell all our followers, you have to like this post and you have to go follow these other two and then tag a friend. People will do that all day long. All of a sudden you've tripled your followers. You've gotten more engagement, which grows your following. You might be thinking, yeah, right. Uh, I know this works and I'm gonna tattletale just for a second because my wife does it all the time. She is constantly tagging me in posts where you have to tag someone because she wants to win something. <laughs> she wants to win whatever it is. She wants to win a blender. She wants, to, she does it all the time. I constantly been getting notifications from you know her and other people because they have to tag somebody. They have to follow an account and tag somebody. It works. So if you're good at Instagram, if you like taking pictures, if your product or your offer, you know, is uh, photo worthy, I guess you could say, and everything can be, you know, if you think it's not, just go look up your niche by keyword uh, on Instagram. You will find, you know, you think, well, how could, let's say cryptocurrency, how could Bitcoin be, you know, uh, uh, Instagram worthy. Well, they're, they're creating infographics about Bitcoin and how it works and the money that can be made. And yeah, and I'm not endorsing it or anything like that. I'm just saying it is there and it is working. So don't write something off, especially if you're already good at a platform, go figure out somebody else that's doing it well in your niche and mimic them, you know? Don't ever copy their stuff. Do not plagiarize, okay? Uh, one, it's just, it. well, it's illegal, but it's just wrong, okay? Don't rip off other people's hard, hard work. But that doesn't mean you can't mimic them, you know? You know, rewrite things in your own word. And I'm not talking about putting an article into an article spinner and saying it's your own. I'm saying, take the concept and write about your experience with it. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, that's literally what most things are on the internet anyway, is somebody talking about some concept that somebody else has already talked about a thousand times in their own perspective. And people will love it. I mean, I follow accounts like that on Instagram because I want to see what they're talking about in business. I don't particularly use Instagram, even though the more and more that I come across it, uh, I'm realizing it's probably something I should add because of how well it works. Okay, so now let's skip right back over to the paid ad side. Let's take a look at this again, okay? These are the big ones. Facebook ads, Instagram, YouTube, LinkedIn, Google, okay? Um, let's talk about some of the good side and the bad side so you understand when you start to add these or whether you're ready to add them now because remember, um, it's time or money. So if, let's say you're so just ridiculously busy. You have a job that you work 80 hours a week and a family and a this and a that. Well, if you want to start a business up, you're going to have to spend money because you don't have the time to do, you know, the things that maybe the person that has all the time in the world, but no money is going to do on their own. And that's just a, something you have to decide. There's a ton that I spend money on in my business. Um, even though my traffic strategy is free, uh, I spend on, you know, software and I spend on training and I said, I mean, because I, it's a business expense and it helps me grow and grow. And there are certain things that I've, I can put my time into, but I'm not particularly great at it. Like, I don't know how to create a really nice looking, um, video with graphics and blah, blah, blah. Okay. I don't have a clue how to do it. So why would I waste all my time trying to figure it out when there's sites like Fiverr where some dude will do it for five bucks for me or 10 or 20 and save me hours of headache to come up with a product that's not as good as paying the dude to do it and get it done and then focusing on what I'm good at, okay? So Facebook ads. Facebook allows you to target so well, so well. I mean, you know, age, uh, location, um, interests, job, 
so, I mean, it used to be even more, but then they got in a little bit of trouble, but you can target, you can narrow down practically uh, as small as you want to get. If you have a solution for a, you know, let's say a 65 plus year old retired male uh, ex-CEO of a company that lives in this state, in this town, that is interested in the keto diet um, and, I don't know, bicycling, you could narrow it down that clearly which is what's fantastic about Facebook ads and Instagram's right in there the same because it works on the same platform, but it will cost you. And if you're not good at it, it will cost you even more. So if you're gonna do a paid ad strategy, remember this, you want to create enough curiosity to get somebody to do the action that you want them to do on the ad. Okay. Do you want them to click through to a website? Do you want them to fill out a form? Do you want them to hit you up in messenger? What is the outcome and how will your ad drive curiosity to that outcome? What value can you offer enough in that ad to get them to take the action? Because really all an ad is, is for you to capture someone's attention enough that you can keep mark marketing to them afterwards. And we're gonna talk about follow-up tomorrow because especially if you are paying for ads, you need to have a follow-up system in place. You do not want to pay for it. And if you don't get the sale right away, they're gone. That is the worst way to do it, okay? Now, I'm not saying you could never make money that way, but why make it harder on yourself, okay? YouTube ads, again, it has to be a video. So if you're not any good at it, if you don't know how to create it, you don't wanna create it, you don't have any interest in it, don't do YouTube ads. You know, LinkedIn ads, is your product gonna be directed more at professionals? Is it gonna be directed maybe more at professionals that wanna get out of being a professional? Well. Maybe on LinkedIn, there are plenty of people that they're in the corporate world and they're on LinkedIn, but they are, do not want to be anymore. So maybe you're running LinkedIn ads. Google, pay-per-click, I mean, everybody uses Google. I'm not saying nobody uses Bing, but uh, Google's obviously the biggest one. Um, it's also the hardest because you get a little headline and a little snippet, and it's based on keywords that everybody and their brother is bidding on and if you don't do it right and, you know, you can easily screw up their algorithm, you can, you know, get banned, making your landing page correct is super difficult, you know, so it's there. And if you do get good at it, you could dominate it because that's where the majority of all traffic on the internet is Google. So putting your ads in front of people is easiest in terms of volume but maybe you're not gonna start there, okay? There are other things that we'll talk about and I'm gonna stop sharing this and then I'm gonna show you a couple other ideas that might be surprising to you that are available to run paid ads on or not. We're gonna talk about both sides of it with these specific sites, okay? So right here, you may or may not be familiar with Reddit. Um, Reddit, has topics on literally everything, okay? But if you scroll down, there is an ad right here and it goes to a specific subreddit and then there's another ad, okay? But these ads will also refresh and show ads that don't go to subreddits. These ads on Reddit, because people don't, most advertisers, especially uh, people getting started, they don't know they exist. So they're way cheaper. They might not be exactly as targeted as maybe like a Facebook ad, but they're so much cheaper for somebody starting out who's trying to figure out whether their ad will convert or not. That's one, okay? The next is Pinterest, okay? Now, 
you might think of Pinterest as recipes and clothing lines and physical products because they have pictures of them that would really matter, okay? But look at this, okay? How to treat ADHD and anxiety when you have both. Now, that is definitely not, you know, picture worthy in the sense of taking a picture of the product. I don't know where this is going to lead, so we're just going to click on it anyways, all right? What you need to know about ADHD and anxiety, okay? There's their website, and I hope this doesn't go anywhere that I don't appreciate. Little Miss Lionheart, okay? So here's her blog. Check it out. Glad you're here. Tia, the therapist brain behind Little Miss Lionheart. Okay. So her pin goes to something where she has an article, but look at all these ads in between. There's an Amazon ad. There's an Amazon ad. Okay. So she simply made a pin about this, you know, thing that somebody's interested in. They click on it. They go to her site. And she's got advertising all over it. And look, here's a little opt-in form so they can follow up with her. And then look at this. Grab this free guide to help you get a good assessment. This is probably a like couple page questionnaire that she wrote up in five minutes and they're gonna give her their email address. Now she'll be able to follow up with them, which we're gonna talk about tomorrow. And she's gonna be able to market to them from then on, okay? I'll show you another one that I found, okay? Look at this, 25 hacks that can make life easier with brain fog. This was the picture that they pinned to Pinterest. Again, it's not a recipe. It's not some pretty picture. It's a picture that they created, you know, pretty captivating, you know, a silhouette in the fog with bright red light uh, lettering that speaks about fog. And then look, there's their link, okay? probably goes to another site where they have things for sale, their product, their solution, their opt-in. And the thing is, you might already know how to use Pinterest. Um, it's free, but you can also run ads on Pinterest. And because so many people only think of Pinterest as if I've got, you know, something that's visually aesthetic. You can make any subject visually aesthetic and advertise it on Pinterest, okay? Brain fog is not visually aesthetic, but they made something visually aesthetic that now, I mean, look how many of these people of followers these people have, 145,000 followers, and they're not, they're, you know, it's not meant to be visually aesthetic as far as other people think and advertise. So advertising on Pinterest is super cheap. These types of pictures you can put together with free tools like canva.com, C-A-N-V-A.com for free and Pixabay and stuff like that. And it's so, I mean, there's nothing special about this picture but think of all the traffic that they're getting from it, okay? Just an idea, free or paid. And remember, it's always gonna be your decision between which one, time or money, time or money, okay? But now that we're through all of that, okay? All these different things that you could do. I mean, you could even run Bing ads, okay? like. Bing is a search engine just like Google. Nobody gives it credit because it has like not even, I think, 10% of the, the traffic that Google does. But that doesn't mean it doesn't get millions of people a day. And guess what? I've run Bing ads and they're way cheaper than they are on Google for the same exact thing. I mean, literally like a quarter of the cost. Well, I don't care whether somebody's typing in how to make money online in Google or how to make money online in Bing. If I'm going to pay, you know, 25% of what I'd pay in Google, why wouldn't I just go get my traffic from Bing? Most people just don't realize that they don't make the effort because they think, oh, Google's the big one. I got to do it. And that's usually people that are brand new. 
So we're trying to solve that for you so that you can avoid some of these struggles that other people don't get made aware of. I hope this is providing value to you. I haven't looked in the actual Facebook group for a while um, at questions, but I really, really hope that this is uh, connecting with you. Um, hey, Jason, I just noticed your comment about Stack Exchange, Stack Overflow. I don't even know those ones, see? I mean, there's stuff out there. I don't know everything. You know, there's another one for you. Uh, yeah. Yep, exactly. Um, okay. So we're going to talk about my personal favorite. Okay. And this is Facebook organic traffic. Okay. Now, remember, when I say organic, I mean free. Okay. Um, that doesn't mean I've never run a paid ad for Facebook, okay? Because you want to progress in time, you want to progress to running paid ads because you can get way more traffic that way. But especially starting out, especially starting out, because the great thing about free traffic, yes, it costs you time, but even if you screw it up royally, it didn't cost you anything. You didn't blow through a massive budget you know, that you're now regretting and not having any results. You spend some time, but if you're starting out, most people have more time than they have money. That's why they're starting out. Okay. Thank you, Heather. I appreciate that. With Facebook organic, you can truly get in front of the people that are already interested in what you are providing as a solution uh, to their problems, okay? This shouldn't really come as much of a surprise because think about it from the fact that Facebook is the largest social media platform. I think there's something like 3 billion accounts or whatever, I don't know. Um, it's probably gone up way more since that statistic I saw. Um, there are so many groups, I don't even have a statistic on that, um, about anything and everything that you can go into and find like-minded people. And you don't even have to like guess at that because you can literally type in your keywords, find groups and go in and look at the people that are in that group and are commenting and so on. And if you can put a solution in front of them that's where sales can come from, okay? So how can you do this, okay? How does it work? Well, the reality is um, there's not a lot to it, but you do need to do it right, okay? So remember when we talked about making sure your social media platform always talks about who you are and the solution that you provide? You can do the same thing with your Facebook profile. You know, your cover photo is yours. Your profile picture is yours. Your posts are yours. Your stories are yours. Your live videos are yours. The little about section is yours. The featured photo is yours. You can make all of that revolve around your solution that you are offering so that when people check you out, they'll look and go, wow. This person has some value to provide for me. Now, how would you even get somebody to check you out in the first place? Well, it's simple. You find these Facebook groups of targeted people that are interested already in what subject you revolve around and look for people looking for help. You can talk to them through the comments on the things that you are. You can make friends with them. You can have conversations in Messenger. Okay. You can create value on your own wall by posting helpful things that will get conversations started. Now, think about it though. You think, well, oh, how would that work? You already probably have a personal following of friends and family, and they're interested in you because you're friends and family and so on. So they want to know what you're up to. They want to know 
well, how many of us have Facebook friends that we don't actually know in real life because we connected to them on some other level? Does that make sense? That you are already friends with people on Facebook that you don't know in real life because you've connected about some subject. So why not make that subject the one that you have a solution to in your business? If you're a health coach, your profile should re reflect that. You should make an effort to make friends and connect through value with people that could use your services. And that's the same for any interest. I don't care if you write, you know, uh, how to's on knitting. There are knitting groups out there. I, I mean, it, literally any subject that you want to sell a product on, there are groups out there that are already revolved around it that you can join for free, that you can provide value for free, that you can find friends in for free, that you have something in common with, that you have a solution for. Now, does this seem like a little underhanded? Of course not. Because the reality is they're connecting to you because they see value in you. And that's what we will always pr provide for people is value, okay? Think about this for just a second. Every one of you in there, in here, in the challenge, knows me from online. There is only one person in this challenge of 75 people, wait, maybe two, that I actually know face-to-face. -face. I've met everybody else online through Facebook or some other thing. And the majority of you, we have only met through Facebook because of shared interests, whether that's, you know, some type of marketing or online or physical, you know, fitness or, you know, different things that we are interested in. We are connected somehow and you're here. So you trusted me enough to at least give me your time. Now, I didn't ask for any money for the challenge or whatever, but I did ask for your time and you're giving it to me because you expected me from what you knew of me from online to provide you value in exchange for your time. And if you're still here, that's because you feel you're still getting value. So especially starting out, if you don't have a budget to blow on learning ads, and you're not necessarily already really good at another social media platform, Facebook is probably the place to be. Because I'm guessing mostly from the demographic here that most of you aren't trying to uh, have, you know, TikTok and Snapchat age groups as your primary focus of your who. I'm guessing not. Because you want to build businesses, you know, not talk about parties and, you know, things like that. So probably starting with a social media like Facebook and going down that route is right for you. So consider it. It's usually the easiest for people to get started with. It costs them nothing. And let's say you screw it up. Let's say you pick your solution in your niche and you add all the wrong groups and all the wrong friends and you don't get any engagements on your post or anything like that. You know what you can do? Join different groups, add different friends, provide different value. You literally lost nothing. We, the reason we don't do it is we get scared of putting ourselves out there. We don't get scared of it, not, of it not working. We get scared that maybe somebody's gonna call us out. Maybe somebody's gonna call us an idiot. Maybe somebody's gonna say, why are you doing that? Well, the reality is, is if you're going to be a business owner, if you're going to be an entrepreneur, if you're going to put yourself out there online, and we talked about this the other day, you are going to have people that hate you. Tough luck. It does not matter. You could literally be giving money away for free 
with no obligation and somebody would have a reason to complain about you're not giving enough or you're not giving to the right people or they don't like the color of your shirt. So get yourself out there, do it, have conversations. If you don't know what to sell yet, then go out and ask people, what are your problems? What solutions would help you? They're going to tell you. People are on social media because they want to be social. People want to be heard. Ask them a question people want to answer. Engage with them. So again, back to my point of why you're here, all right? There are 75 people in this challenge. I knew about 15 of those from non-Facebook and 60 of you, I've only met through Facebook and maybe relatively recently, maybe some of you, you'll, uh, uh, you know, over the years, but some of you very, very recently, and you're in here for five days spending it with me on a challenge. So this works because most people couldn't get 60 friends and family to join a challenge because they're not giving that right message. They're not getting in front of the right people. So I'm hoping it's sinking in that this really works, okay? Glad you're here, Christy. Glad you're here, Jason. Glad you're here, Bear. I'm glad you are all enjoying all these suggestions. I'm glad they're as helpful. And I'm glad, Jason, that I'm being slightly entertaining. <laughs> I didn't just sit there and talk like this the whole time. Anyways, okay, real quickly, I have two homework assignments for you, okay? And I want you to do them both. I'm only gonna cover one of them though, okay? It's our homework just like it's been every other day, okay? Starting to think about our traffic sol solutions, okay? Where to find your who, okay? Now I've been doing this for a while, so my answers are gonna be a little bit different than yours, but I still want you to listen for ideas, okay? I am most likely to find my who spending their time on Facebook because it's the largest social network. That's for me. I already spend most of my time using Facebook since that is the focus of what I teach. I am most comfortable with posting written value, but I'm practicing being comfortable with live video. Practicing right now. I know to get traffic, it is some combination of either time or money. And for me, I use free Facebook traffic and am expanding my knowledge of how to properly run Facebook ads. I'm not there yet. I do run ads. Uh, I'm fairly successful with them, but I'm definitely not the expert, but I'm working at it. I commit to posting once per day, providing results, value, lifestyle, and doing it for the next 30 days to grow my engagement and my following. So you, what are you going to commit to doing? Because without a commitment, you're just simply not going to grow a business. You've got to commit to it. I will learn paid strategies on Facebook once I have made such and such. I want you to put this in writing for yourself. I don't care what your paid strategy is. I don't care what number you set out, but I want you to set a goal and a commitment that at some point, once you start using free methods, that you learn how to use some paid methods because that can move your business up. I purposely did not run paid ads to this challenge because I wanted to show you that you could get people to something like a challenge without really knowing them just from Facebook and that they join you because maybe your product is a challenge. Maybe your lead magnet is a challenge. I don't know. It's your business. 
you have to figure it was one of those things in the offer, the lead magnet offer, it said, run a challenge. Maybe that works for you. Maybe it's the best way to showcase what you do. And that's your offer at the end of it. I don't know. Get that homework done. Now, the second piece of homework and almost, almost what I would consider more important, but I'll be selfish and tell you it's more important for me. I will post a survey in today's unit when I post uh, the homework for the day that I want you to take time to answer. And I'd really like you, if you can, to answer it by tomorrow. I told you that I wanted to help you out specifically. Well, I can't know that without knowing you specifically. And so I'm giving you an opportunity to, through the survey, to tell me exactly where you're at. Because I'm not going to make the assumption this group is full of people from all different top types of experiences and walks of life and locations and financial situations and everything. So it has questions about what experience you have, you know, who your who is, what your product is, if you know what you'd like it to be, what you'd like to focus on, how much time you commit, commit to it. Do you have an advertising budget if you want to get started with ads and things like that, what you feel you need from here, and so on. I want you to on, answer it very, very honestly, because no, no one's going to see it but me. I don't want you to post that live. I mean, you can if you want, but that is really for me to be able to help you, okay? So go through it, answer it honestly, spend as, write as much as you want to it or not, save it as a file. You can either send it to me in Messenger if we're friends or uh, on the paper itself, it gives you my email address that you can just send it to me directly. Um, and I'm gonna look over them because the reality is, I have had several of you private message me that you don't want the challenge to be over and that to be it with our relationship. You have asked for more coaching. And I've said, I, I did not like that idea simply because I promised you that I wasn't doing this to make it a pitch. Well, um, if you feel though that I'm the right answer for you, I want to be that for you. But I also through your answers on your page, I can tell you whether I am the right answer for you or not, because I'm, I, I don't know everything. It, nobody does. And there are people, because of how long I've been doing this, that I know can help with very specific things. So let's say you already have your product done and ready to go at Lead Magnet, but you don't know how to, you know, do email follow-ups, which we're going to cover tomorrow. I mean, I'm, I'm okay at it, but I'm not the world-class expert. Um, I'm not the world-class expert on shooting video, but I know people that are, and I can point you in the direction of at least who you should go learn from for free and then decide whether you want to spend your money with them or not. That's always, you know, I, I do more good by helping connect people to the right people. And even, even if, if you're an affiliate marketer, your goal should always be to connect people with the best that is out there for them, okay? You don't wanna just hawk products. That makes you a scumbag. And if you are in this group and you're hawking products, I'm sorry to call you out, but you're a scumbag. Don't do that to people. Give them value. Give them true beneficial products that can help them better their life, okay? Um, as far as, I mean, I've, I've talked about some of the programs I've used and maybe you're interested in them or not. Uh, I'll never shove them down your throat. I'll tell you what I offer when I do. And I, here we go. I have one offer for you. Okay. Okay. Here it goes. The big, big offer. And it's so expensive. It's so expensive that you might just faint. It's 10 bucks. For those of you that don't want the challenge to end tomorrow, because tomorrow's day five, it's going to cost you 10 bucks to get more coaching, 10 whopping dollars. Okay. 
I'm going to run an extra day on Saturday. I'm not even exactly sure how we're going to structure it yet because I wasn't going to do this. But the best way that I can help you move forward is to get you all into a group and then tackle the problems that you're looking at. But I'm going to, I want you to commit to it. Okay. That's why it's going to cost you 10 bucks. Now, keep in mind, I'm not just asking you to give me $10 because I'm not. And I didn't even realize this until something that happened yesterday. I showed you a lead magnet. I showed you that double your productivity book that is for everyone. I mean, any entrepreneur should learn to be more productive. And I was just showing you an example of a lead magnet and some of you bought it. And I realized like, oh, they're interested in this because they realize it's beneficial to them. So what now I'm going to offer in retrospect for those of you that have already bought the Double Your Productivity book, okay? You're going to get an extra day on Saturday where we're going to tackle some big issues and some of your personal issues and we're going to make sure you get moving forward, okay? And if you need more after that, we'll figure that out. I really don't know what I'm going to do with it yet. But... That book sells by itself for $10 on its own. So you're literally getting Saturday for free by simply buying a lead magnet of mine that people already pay for free. Some of you already bought it without knowing that Saturday was going to be offered. So you're going to get in there as a bonus anyway. So I totally had no plan to like bring this up. So let me figure out what the page is really quick because I don't even remember. Um, I will post it in the chat. If you want to buy it and you want that extra day on Saturday, there you go. It's 10 bucks. This book was written by literally a hundred million dollar affiliate marketer. That is my personal mentor getting anything of his for $10 is better, I mean, than most paid courses out there. The dude's just a genius. But the thing is, is you don't have access to him because he costs $3,000 an hour. And you're not a part of the cooperative that I'm a part of that's closed at the moment where I pay a hefty monthly fee to get access to him in a group setting, okay? And to be pr able to promote using his tools and so on. But you can literally get access to his knowledge and his power for 10 bucks and me for an extra day helping you with the answers to your questionnaire. That's what I want to do on Saturday is answer your questions about you. Now, I don't know whether we're going to do a group Zoom or I'm going to do it like this and we're just going to follow the chat. I don't have the structure yet, but I also have somebody who's going to help hop in there to help because he has just as much, if not more experience than I do, you're going to meet him tomorrow because he's going to come in and talk about follow-up for you guys on how the right way to build an email list and do that so you can continue to commit to people. That's my offer. A whopping 10 bucks to get me for an extra hour or two solving your specific issues. If the book's not worth it, you know, to you for 10 bucks or my time's not worth 10 bucks to you to get solutions, then we obviously don't resonate. And that's okay because not everybody's going to. But I would hope that I've earned your trust enough that that doesn't seem unreasonable. Anyways, we're going to wrap it up for today. Do both your homeworks. Do both your homeworks. I look forward to seeing your lives with your homework. I have look forward to seeing where you're at so that you can take your next step because that's what I want you to do. You don't need to see the whole road. You just need to know what your next step is. And I want to help you get there. And that's what we've been trying to do all week. And I think some of you are already there and you just need a little push. 
Some of you need to actually see what the next step is. Um, Bear specifically, no, I cannot do it on Sunday. My apologies. Um, uh, I understand that doesn't work for you and I apologize. I cannot do it on Sunday. Um, it just doesn't work for me. I can't make that happen. It has to be on Saturday, um, especially because I have to start my next challenge again on Monday. Um, if you would like to be a part of it though, uh, get the book and I promise you there will be a replay and I promise you that I will give you some of my own time, uh, either briefly on Sunday, but not in a group or at a time that works where we can get together one-on-one. -on -one. Um, that's the best answer I can give you, Bear. Um, anyways, if you don't wanna be a part of it, that's totally cool too. Like, it's no skin off my back. I just know some of you are ready to take the next step um, and some of you already know what that is and you're gonna go do it on your own. And I more power to you, I absolutely love that so many of you are moving forward just on what we've learned over the last four days. And we still have another day that's going to be awesome. We're going to do follow up tomorrow and how that is truly going to explode your business over time. Because once you pump them into that funnel, sometimes they're there for years and people will spend thousands with you over time. And that's a great thing for you and for them because you're always providing value. Anyways, I love you. Have a good night. Peace out.